I had surgery to treat my cervix. Even on the day of the surgery and during my hospital stay, my husband didn't show up. When I returned home to him, waiting, these words came flying at me. So you're back from the surgery, huh? Welcome home, lazy bones. Huh? Timothy's remark may have been intended as a joke, but it's far too harsh. I'd only been away for four days, yet the house was a mess. Cups from instant noodles were piling up in the sink. If you're back, then hurry up and do the chores. As you can see, the house is a mess. I just had surgery on my cervix. I need to rest. At that, my husband twisted his face into a smirk. What do you mean rest? If you can't make babies anymore, you might as well be the housekeeper. At least start with cleaning. I reached my limit at that moment. I just had surgery for cervical cancer, and he says this. That's incredibly rude. There's no point in being married to someone like this anymore. In the next moment, a voice echoed from behind. Is that all you have to say? Following this, Timothy would lose everything. My name is Emily Sanders. I'm a 30-year-old homemaker. My mother fell ill when I was in elementary school, and after a long struggle with illness, she passed away. Since then, I was raised by my father. When my father asked me, "What do you want to become in the future?" I answered, "A nurse." My mother, who was chronically ill, always expressed gratitude towards nurses. So I wanted to help people suffering from illness and injury. My father supported my dream and sent me to nursing school. The nursing job I started afterwards was tough but fulfilling. After working night shifts and caring for others for several years, I realized I was nearing my late twenties without a boyfriend. At that time, one of my colleagues invited me to her wedding. There, I met Timothy, who would later become my husband. Timothy was my classmate and was twenty-eight years old at the time. Despite his youth, he held a managerial position at a company manufacturing medical equipment. Emily, I seem to have fallen for you at first sight. At the end of the mixer, Timothy whispered that to me and gave me his contact information. Feeling no ill will, I contacted Timothy myself, and our relationship began. During our courtship, Timothy was kind to me. He understood my work, and I began to think, "There's no one else like him." After dating for a year, Timothy proposed to me. "Emily, please marry me. Let's build a happy family together." Timothy, thank you. I'm so happy. And thus, I accepted his proposal and became engaged. My father shed tears of joy at my marriage to Timothy. Next, it was finally time to visit Timothy's family. In his family home lived his father, Joseph, who was the president of the company where Timothy worked. Medaid Medical Co. and his mother Nancy, the vice president. So Timothy was working at his parents' company. That's why Timothy held a managerial position at such a young age. My in-laws warmly welcomed me. My goodness, Timothy, bringing such a lovely young lady. Come on in, come on in. With a beaming smile, my mother-in-law handed me indoor slippers. As we were led into the living room, Timothy spoke again. I'm thinking of marrying Emily here. My father-in-law nodded and smiled at me, saying, "Emily, we're of course wholeheartedly in favor of this marriage. By the way, Emily, how does your family feel about this marriage?" Actually, my mother is no longer with us. I explained my family background. My in-laws listened with curious expressions. So I was raised by my father and became a nurse. I believe my late mother would have been happy about this marriage too. At this, my mother-in-law gently wiped away tears and took my hand. I see, I see. It must have been tough all this time. Your father is admirable too. Oh, I must properly greet your father when I meet him. Timothy, make sure you protect Emily and make her happy, okay? As my father-in-law patted Timothy's back, Timothy furrowed his brows and said. I know, Dad. On the way back home, I told Timothy, "Your parents—they're wonderful people. I'm happy to become a part of the family." Really? They were very strict with me, the heir to the family, and I grew up scared of them when I was little. 
I got slapped around all the time. Well, if you put it that way. With Timothy scratching his head, I couldn't help but chuckle a bit. After that, Timothy and I registered our marriage. As a wedding gift, my father-in-law presented us with a condominium about an hour away from our hometown, so we decided to live there. Shortly thereafter, Timothy said to me, Hey, Emily, now that you're married, can you quit your job? Huh? I was taken aback. The hospital where I worked had been my place since graduating from nursing school, and I had good relationships with my colleagues and supervisors. More than anything, I loved being a nurse. I had always assumed that even after marriage, I would continue working. So I replied, I actually want to keep working even after we get married. But Timothy didn't seem pleased. Huh? There are plenty of people who could replace your job. We can live just fine with my income. After getting married, if you keep working, people might think I'm incompetent without a housewife. I kept refusing, but Timothy kept insisting. Still, when I persisted with, I won't quit being a nurse, he finally seemed to give up, or so I thought. And thus began our married life with both of us working. Just as I was thinking that, I immediately hit a wall. Timothy didn't do any housework at all. Since he had experienced living alone, there was no reason he couldn't do it. He wouldn't even take his dishes after eating, let alone do a single cleaning task. While I was doing chores at night, he would just lie on the sofa messing around with his phone. Since I also have a job, having to take care of all the housework honestly felt like a burden. When I was living alone, I could slack off by saying things like dinner can be something simple or cleaning can wait until the weekend, but with just the two of us living together, that wasn't an option anymore. Living like this, being the only one doing housework for months on end, I finally lost it with Timothy. Hey, Timothy, I have a favor to ask. Could you do a bit more housework? Then Timothy, without taking his eyes off his phone, said this. Huh? Can't you just keep doing it like you have been, Emily? I'm tired from work, you know. I have a job too, you know. It's not fair that I'm the only one who has to do all the housework. What's unfair about it? Household chores are traditionally the wife's job, and you chose to work, so stop complaining and balance work and housework properly. But, as I stood there dumbfounded, Timothy said this to me. I've been thinking for a while now that you're not doing enough housework. For dinner, instead of just salad, I want you to add two more dishes after the main course. And could you clean more thoroughly every day? Sometimes I feel embarrassed to even live in this room, you know? <laughs> but that's... Is it because you're working? So you're making excuses, huh? That's why I'm telling you to quit that job, didn't I? But I don't want to. I want to continue being a nurse. Fine, if you insist on that, I understand. At the time, he backed off easily, but two days later, he found out the hard way. Emily, I received this. What does it mean? My boss showed me a resignation letter with my name on it. Huh? No, I don't intend to quit. Is this your husband's handwriting by any chance? I won't delve too deep, but it seems there are complicated circumstances. I'll hold on to this, so make sure to talk it over with your husband. That day, I confronted Timothy, and my husband became angry. You can't even do housework properly, yet you want to work? That's too selfish. That's why I sent the resignation letter. But this is too much. Just quit your job. Otherwise, we can get a divorce, you know? Before we even reached our first wedding anniversary, I was presented with divorce papers, leaving me frozen. I didn't want to disappoint my father and his high hopes for us. Thinking that, I reluctantly said, I understand. I'll quit my job. You should have done that from the beginning. From now on, make sure to do everything around the house perfectly. After Timothy left, looking satisfied, I shed tears. Soon after, I became a full-time housewife, just as he wanted. But that was the beginning of hell. If anything wasn't done to Timothy's liking, he'd scold and belittle me. He even insulted me, saying things like, this is why women raised in broken homes are like this. Months passed in such a manner. Then another problem arose. Even after a year of marriage, we couldn't conceive. When I told him we weren't pregnant that month, he said, it seems like you're infertile after trying for a year. 
Yeah. Could it be because there's something wrong with you that you can't get pregnant? But before we got married, I had regular checkups and there were no issues. Fine, go to the doctor sometime and get checked out in detail. Upon Timothy's suggestion, I went to see a gynecologist. I hadn't been too concerned before marriage as I had been focused on work, but it turned out to be a blessing in disguise. The results of the examination left me shocked. An abnormality was found in my uterus, a mild cervical dysplasia. I was stunned. I recognized that term from my nursing days. So, it's cervical cancer? It's before it becomes cancerous, but if left untreated, it will develop into that. Let's start treatment from now on. I received an explanation from the doctor. The treatment involved a procedure called a saline resection, which would remove a part of the uterus. In a daze, I returned home and relayed everything to Timothy, just as I was told. And he said, Huh? You have cervical dysplasia? Is that a disease where a lot of people die from? Despite being shocked by his words, I explained, If I undergo surgery to remove part of the uterus, my life can be saved. Oh, I see. Are you going to have the surgery? Yes. Fine, but should we use insurance or pay out of our savings for the surgery? I don't want to waste money unnecessarily. His words opened my eyes. I had thought he would be concerned about my health, but instead he said such things. But I didn't have the energy left to stop Timothy. After a while, I told my mother-in-law about the surgery. She was surprised, but supported me. I was grateful for her support. Timothy didn't accompany me to the surgery. He didn't show up at the hospital that day or the day after. Two days after the procedure, I was discharged. That day, Timothy was at home because he had a day off. I'm back. Oh, is the surgery over? You look the same as usual. Huh? He might have meant it as a joke, but his words were too harsh. Even though I had only been away for four days, the house was a mess. There were cup noodle containers piled up in the sink. If you're back, then hurry up and do the housework. As you can see, the house is a mess. I just had surgery for cervical cancer. I need to rest. What do you mean, rest? If you can't have children anymore, you should at least be a proper housewife. <laughs> Start with cleaning. <laughs> at that moment, I reached my limit. This kind of talk to a wife who just has cervical cancer surgery? There's no point in being married to someone like this anymore. Suddenly, a voice came from behind. Timothy, is that all you have to say? Huh? Mom? And Dad? Appearing behind us were my in-laws, their faces red with anger. Emily said she was getting discharged, so we came to check on her. Since the front door was open, we let ourselves in. We heard everything from earlier. As my father-in-law said this in a low voice, Timothy's face turned pale. My mother-in-law stepped forward and looked at me. Emily, are you okay? Lie down or sit however you're comfortable. We'll take care of him. I took advantage of my mother-in-law's words and sat down. Then my mother-in-law said, Tell me what Timothy did to you. And I told her everything. Being forced to quit my job, being verbally abused, not receiving help with medical expenses, and not even receiving any visits. My parents-in-law, who had been silent until then, started trembling. Timothy, with a pale face, alternated between looking at me and his parents. Dad? Mom? That's not it. She's always slacking off on housework, so I have to say something or she won't do anything. Shut up, you piece of trash. You're not worthy of being called a husband. At my father-in-law's shout, Timothy trembled violently. Then my mother-in-law spoke quietly to Timothy. Timothy, do you remember when I had to be hospitalized because of cancer when you were in high school? It was news to me that my mother-in-law had cancer. At the time, your father was really worried and reassured me that he would take care of everything at home, so don't worry. Didn't you see your father like that? But mom... The one who's feeling most helpless here is Emily. Instead of caring for your wife, you treat her like dirt, you stupid son. My mother-in-law slapped Timothy's cheek. 
The sound echoed, and Timothy covered his cheek, his eyes wide with shock. Since we're married, isn't it my job to discipline my wife too? Isn't that how it's supposed to be? Are you still talking, you piece of trash? This time my father-in-law delivered a powerful punch to Timothy. As Timothy groaned, my father-in-law said, Our company is a medical equipment manufacturer. We do work that benefits patients. We can't let someone like you take over the company. You're fired. Huh? Fired? My mother-in-law followed up. Of course, we're also cutting ties with you. Get out of this house and never show your face again. Wait, Dad, Mom, please. Timothy was pleading with them, but my in-laws didn't change their minds. Then Timothy started to cling to me. Emily, I'm sorry. I apologize, so please convince my parents too. You'll be in trouble without my income too, right? That's when I said firmly, Timothy, let's get divorced. I'll claim division of assets and compensation for mental anguish, so be prepared for that. B but As Timothy started crying, my father-in-law grabbed him by the collar and dragged him off somewhere. Left behind, I was repeatedly apologized to by my mother-in-law. After a while, Timothy and I got divorced. Thanks to my father-in-law hiring a lawyer, the divorce went smoothly. I obtained assets division and compensation, and my in-laws even provided a substantial amount of money earned from selling the apartment as compensation for the trouble caused. Timothy was indeed fired from my father-in-law's company. Being kicked out of the house and having exhausted his savings on payments to me, he ended up crashing in a bathtubless apartment and now juggles multiple part-time jobs, I heard. Even hearing that, I feel no sympathy whatsoever. I want him to experience hardship. On the other hand, using the compensation, I moved out and started a new life. The recovery after surgery went well and I was able to return to work as a nurse. I chose to work in women's health. I wanted to be a support for those who went through what I did. Furthermore, two years after divorcing Timothy, I met someone and remarried and we were able to have children. Since my cervical cancer was detected early, it didn't affect my ability to conceive. I'm grateful to my in-laws who supported me during that time, and I want to live happily with my own family from now on.